How's it going everyone? Welcome to Shifting Lanes. And for this video, you find me with the 2022 Honda Ridgeline Black Edition. This is finished in crystal black pearl and it has a black interior with special red lighting. And it can all be yours before any packages and accessories for a little over $45,000. And I'm here to share with you my likes and dislikes about this pickup truck so you have a better idea before you buy. And if you learn anything new while watching this video, or if you like it, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and especially that notification bell button because your views, your comments, and all your feedback will help this channel out immensely. Now, the first thing I like about this Ridgeline is the rugged truck looks. And with the black on black scheme, man, this thing looks so good. This truck received a facelift for the 2021 model year, so everything forward of the A-pillar is new. It now looks more boxy. The hood has been restyled, so the front end looks a bit taller. Although I have to say this hood looks kind of weird because it looks like there's a panel gap between the hood and the front bumper. Maybe it's just this copy. Maybe it could be adjusted. Who knows? But this looks a bit weird to me. And then if you look at the front grille, that now looks more like a toolbox. So this looks pretty rugged. And then this being the black edition, you get the special black edition badging on the grill. And then below, you'll find standard LED fog lights and more squared off features to help make this look more truck-like and less like its SUV sibling, the Honda Pilot. Around the side, you'll find more black edition features like the black 18 inch wheels and black window surrounds. If you opt for any of the HPD packages, you can get bigger fender flares, special wheels, and the HPD decals to give it a more aggressive look. So the profile of this truck looks pretty good. This is obviously a unibody construction. Now there's plenty of pros and cons of having a unibody construction for a truck, and I'll go more into that later on. But one of the pros I don't hear about is how much cleaner and more aerodynamic the design looks because it's a unibody. The transition between the rear door and the bed is very clean. Does the Ridgeline really need this seam over here? Not really. Even the first gen Ridgeline didn't have it and it gave you a very clean, albeit weird, El Camino look. But having the seam here gives it that traditional pickup truck look where the bed is entirely separate from the cab. Finally, around back, there's a lot I like about the Ridgeline. First of all, the bed is 50 inches wide between the wheel wells, meaning that you can fit a four foot wide building material flat on the bed. This is the only truck in its class that can do this. Sure, this is only a 64 inch long bed, which means that for the really big and long stuff, you'd have to open the tailgate and secure it with some ratchet straps. If you want to do this with the Toyota Tacoma or the Nissan Frontier, you'd have to straddle those large items over the wheel wells. Another thing I like is that the Ridgeline's tailgate can flip down like a normal tailgate or swing open to the left so it's easier to reach items without having to climb into the bed. As a bonus, there's also a trunk-like compartment below the bed. It's fairly deep so you can put groceries in here if you want. And there's also a drain plug in here, so this can double as a cooler as well. I also like that you can access this trunk regardless of how you open the tailgate. And moving inside, there's a lot of stuff I like in here as well, starting with the second row. First of all, there's a decent amount of rear legroom at 36.7 inches, and there's plenty of underbench storage as well. And there's also two USB ports in the back for your passengers. When you don't have any rear passengers, you can flip this bench up, turning the second row into a very versatile space. You can fit a bicycle in here, maybe a generator and a small fridge. Sitting in the front row, this space looks more SUV and car-like. There's no big knobs and buttons that are work glove friendly in here. There's a lot of piano black trim. So while the Ridgeline's face got that edgy and boxy redesign, the interior design looks exactly the same as the past few years. If you look at the infotainment screen, there's now a volume dial, which has been reintroduced since the 2021 model year. That's a nice welcome change, but I wish that they would change other things about this screen as well. First of all, the touch capacitive buttons on the side, don't like that. I prefer physical buttons. And also the screen here, 
it's just okay, but it's been really cold in the mornings the past few days, and when I turn on the car, the screen updates very slowly, and when you move things around, the refresh rate isn't very nice, and when you turn on the backup camera, the picture just updates very sluggishly, and there's a lot of ghosting, so it looks really, really weird. And also, the user interface, it looks like I'm operating with an iPhone 3G. I hope they update this very soon. And if you look at the new Honda Civic, that has the new infotainment system, and that looks so much more modern and works so much better than this. So hopefully in the next few years, we'll see that infotainment screen on this one. Now, if you want to see a review of the Honda Civic, please check out the link up here. As for the rest of the Ridgeline interior, it's not bad at all. It doesn't look cheap like a work truck, but it also doesn't look too upscale either. Some nice touches you can find in here are the wireless phone charger, a very low profile transmission buttons instead of a gear shifter, plenty of controls on the steering wheel, including the heated steering wheel button on the steering wheel itself, which is super nice. And you have decent seats in here with a pivoting armrest. I don't care too much for this pivoting armrest because it does get in the way of you putting your seatbelt in. But I understand why Honda likes to do it this way. If you look at other cars and other pickup trucks, the center console storage is usually this large pad. You have to ask the passenger to move their arm. When you want to get access to this, you don't have to disturb the other passenger. That's one nice bonus. As for the instrument cluster, there's a physical tachometer on the left, some gauges on the right hand side, a digital speedometer at the top, and a small digital display in the center. Compared to other mid-sized trucks, this cluster doesn't actually look too bad. As for the driving experience, the Ridgeline drives really well for a pickup truck, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that this is a unibody construction. And there's a lot of benefits of having a unibody construction. First of all, Stiffness is so much higher. The chassis, the roof, the pillars, the front clip, the bed are all interconnected so that this is basically a very big cage. Not only is it much safer in the event of a crash because that energy gets distributed all around the structure, but it also improves a lot of other things like ride and handling qualities. The handling of this Ridgeline is very much not like a truck. A body-on-frame truck has a more disconnected and clumsy driving feel, but this one feels more nimble and responsive. It helps that this Ridgeline has independent rear suspension, whereas body-on-frame trucks usually have a leaf spring in the back. So the better suspension hardware and geometry really gives this truck a more athletic handling. The ride quality is also very nice. Harsh bumps get nicely absorbed, and you don't get jostled too much when you're going over rough roads. There are some trade-offs to having a unibody construction. The big one here is that the available ground clearance isn't that high. The Honda Ridgeline has a ground clearance of 7.6 inches, whereas the Tacoma has an impressive 9.6 inches of ground clearance. Therefore, the approach, the breakover, and the departure angles of the Tacoma is also a lot higher than the Ridgeline simply because of that higher ground clearance. So if off-roading is a big requirement for you, then the Ridgeline is really not what you should be looking at. Sure, this thing has all-wheel drive and the IVTM system, which is actually pretty clever because it can send more torque to the outside wheel so that it can help you maneuver more easily. And also, the clutch packs can actually turn the rear differential into a locking rear differential, which is really cool. But when it comes to off-roading, Something like the Tacoma is just so much better because you can engage the 4x4 system and there's also a two-speed transfer case so that you can exchange some vehicle speed for a lot more torque. Something like that can get you through an off-road course much more easily and handily compared to something like this. But if off-roading is only something that you very casually do or not do at all, and if the pickup truck aspect is much more important for you, then the Ridgeline is a really good option. This is basically a pickup truck without all the clumsiness of a pickup truck. It also has the pickup truck performance specs as this one's equipped with a 3.5 liter V6 engine that pumps out 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. That's a decent sized engine and it is on par with the Tacoma's 3.5 liter V6. What's great here in the Ridgeline though is that that V6 is connected to a nine speed automatic transmission. Whereas in the Tacoma, 
that's connected to either a more traditional six-speed automatic transmission or a six-speed manual. So this should give you better highway performance. And it shows in the mileage rating as this one's rated at 18 city and 24 highway, whereas a Tacoma will get you about 18 city and 22 on the highway. And on top of all of that, there's also some car smarts in here. There's a lot of sensors packed into this truck. There's a lane keeping system. There's also adaptive cruise control. There's a blind spot monitoring system and also rear cross traffic alert. It did take me a while to figure out how to turn on that cruise control feature, but you can press the main button on the steering wheel and that engages all those sensors. And then you can set your cruise control and follow distance as usual. So overall, do I recommend the Honda Ridgeline? If you're looking for that pickup truck lifestyle and not looking for the poor ride quality and poor handling, then this is the pickup truck for you. Considering that this can also tow up to 5,000 pounds, so things like ATVs and small sports cars, this Ridgeline can still do the job. If you're an off-road enthusiast, then I would avoid the Honda Ridgeline altogether. This thing can still get the job done, but there are much better tools out there for better money. Well, there you have it. That's my review of the 2022 Honda Ridgeline. I hope you've learned something. And if you did, hit that like, subscribe, and that notification bell so that you could be notified anytime we make a new video. I'll wrap it up right there. My name is Hanson. You've been watching the 2022 Honda Ridgeline Black Edition. And I'll see you next time.